why I feel Sita had more agency than somebody like Draupadi is that uh, Draupadi provoked a lot of things to happen in the narrative. Why I feel Sita had more agency than somebody like Draupadi is that uh, Draupadi provoked a lot of things to happen in the narrative. Mm, and she was angered. In fact, she didn't wash her hair for 13 years until she had actually bathed in the blood of the man who uh, dishonored her, which is uh, quite something, I must say. But um, Sita, on the other hand, did her duties rigorously. And once her duties were done, once she no longer felt honored as she thought she deserved to be, she rejected her husband, she rejected her royal status and returned to the mother earth, to the arms of mother earth. So I, I think there is my mind more agency in that act of rejection than in the act of, uh, of anger, which is the, uh, the, the symptom or the symbol of Draupadi's condition. But these are figures for each of us to interpret in our own ways. And uh, the strength of Indian women, their individual strengths, though they are socially vulnerable, comes from these goddesses. And many of them, please do remember, are not goddesses. They are more, somewhere between mortals and immortals, born of both. And they have all the human weaknesses that we do as women and as men. Yes, thank you, Navita. And uh, Chitra, coming back to you, you took the story of Panchali and you've portrayed her really as a very rounded character, a character who is a flawed character. She is not in any way an ideal woman. She herself admits to her flaws of anger. She has doubts constantly. And of course, I won't give any spoilers for people who haven't read the novel, but um, it's not just that she's really deeply attached to her husband, which she is. She is attached to her duty, but uh, she has another attachment also, which lingers at the back of her mind always throughout, throughout the book. So uh, how did you ima reimagine Panchali or Draupadi in this manner for your novel? That's a great question. But before I jump into it, I just wanted to say something in the defense of Sita, because one of my <laughs> later novels is The Forest of Enchantments, in yeah. which Sita is the main character and she speaks her story. And you know, uh, what Ira was saying is so true. When I was growing up, I was often blessed. Be like, May you be like Sita. Uh, and I don't think people had much hope because, uh, you know, I was <laughs> kind of a rebellious uh, girl, but they constantly kept blessing me, hoping it would take. Uh, so I was kind of against Sita growing up, but then I wanted to examine her character. I wanted to learn about her. And I found out when I studied Valmiki, when I studied the Bengali Krittibasi Ramayana, when I studied Adbhut Ramayana, Kamba Ramayana, she is much more of a character of agency, intelligent, standing up against wrongs, when she needs to she speaks her mind, tells her husband Ram what is what. When he says, please stay home with my parents uh, while I go off to the forest, she's like, no, I want to go and have an adventure with you. I love you. My place is by your side, etc. I don't want to say too much about that. But, you know, uh, I think it is very important for us to re-examine our mythology for ourselves for both men and women, because the portrayal of women affects men as well in very deep ways. If you've enjoyed the conversation that you just heard, do subscribe to our channel for much more.